as the trender saying maybe it's a spot you're in. I don't think so. We've done streams from here before, but uh, it might be that they're having some kind of intermittent issue, issues with the internet. I turned down the stream settings, so maybe that'll help, <coughs> but we'll see. Um, yeah, I guess stay tuned. We'll we'll get through it together, hopefully. Huh. The hotel doesn't seem to like me doing my uh, intro thing, so maybe if somebody just posts the exclamation mark welcome, then that will replace the idea of the the intro that I say. <laughs> So let's get to our Assassin's Creed live reading. I'll try and keep an eye on the internet settings while we do it, and uh, we will read the book live on stream as we have been. So up to this point in the story, um, we have met this new character, I believe his name is Hepzava, and his wife and daughter, or wife and son rather. This unnamed guy came in and killed his wife and son, and now uh, we have met up with Bayek and Aya, who are the characters we know from AC Origins, following Bayek this time. So we're going to see what happens. We don't necessarily know that this chapter is going to be um, following Bayek, though. It seems like it, it juggles a couple of characters. Skittle Kitty SMF is in here. Welcome, Skittle Kitty, to the stream. Make sure anybody who loses signal on the on the stream lets me know as soon as they can uh, that the, the stream has lost signal. Uh, and thank you to Nickbot. Channel's called The Voice of Nick. Hit that follow button if you want to see more. I won't say any more, uh, not to risk the stream going down again because it hates me introing the show. Here we go. Chapter 4. The next morning, I awoke to a feeling of melancholy that seemed to permeate the air in my room, and for a moment or so, fuzzily trying to navigate that period when the real world and the world of sleep are inseparably tangled I lay wondering what was wrong, what in my world was so strange and different all of a sudden, until I remembered. It all came back. I remembered my mother, standing with her arms folded in the dusk, her lips thin so hard they were almost white, and her eyes afire. In the street outside our house, tethered was my father's horse, uh, his bags already slung over it, and just seeing them there had brought the news closer to home, the realization hitting me like a low punch. When I looked at Aya, she returned my gaze, eyes flecked with worry. Then my father had appeared, only to be brought up short by the sight of the townsfolk assembled there, shaking his head, continuing with his preparations. Amos, he said, appealing to my mother, but if he was hoping for understanding there, he received none. Rabia had arrived. She and my father had exchanged uh, whispered words, none of which seemed to satisfy Rabia, judging by the expression she wore. She and my mother were clearly of one mind. She was shaking her head, trying to impress something on my father, but whatever it was, he paid her no heed, refusing to speak to her in the privacy of our home, insisting he needed to leave at once. Welcome, guys. We're doing a live reading of Assassin's Creed Origins Desert Oath, the AC Origins tie-in book. Join along with this live reading and live reactions on the show. Then he was ready. He kissed my mother and then took me in a fierce embrace, knocking the air out of me as he thumped my back goodbye. He mounted his horse. The crowd quietened. You took an oath, Sabu, said Rabia, but there was a calmness about her, as though accepting the turn of events. I have taken many oaths, Rabia, he said. Who will protect Siwa now? called a voice from the crowd. Without me here, you'll need a lot less protection, he called back. And with that, he drew his horse back around and set off, choosing a path through the townsfolk and heading towards the oasis and away from Siwa. <clears throat> 